Welcome back for another lesson. I know you want to get on with things and catch big fish, but everyone has to start somewhere. And trust me, when you're on the bank with a fish on, you'll thank me for this. Grab your rod and let's get started. Just like before, head for a peg and unload your gear. Now let's talk water trout. Take a minute and have a look at where you're fishing from. You can see there's a decent margin on the opposite side of the lake, with some overhanging trees and some reeds. An ideal place for a carp to hang out. Almost anyone can cast a rod out and wait for the occasional fish, but it requires skill and technique to catch big fish consistently. That's where watercraft comes into play. One element of watercraft is looking for the visual cues. Keep an eye out for splashing, shows and small feeding bubbles. These all indicate that there are fish in the area and this is where you need to be targeting. Now, it looks like there's a lot of weed over there. That'll make things harder. Weed is a fish's dream and an angler's nightmare. If you're using a bottom bait and you cast into weed, your bait will be hidden and the fish won't find it easily. It can also tangle your line and help the fish escape your hook. So, when fishing over a weed bed, try using something that sits above it. A chod rig would do the job. Don't worry if you don't have one, you can just use mine for now. But I want it back at the end of the lesson. When you're ready, cast out to the weeds on the far bank. Don't worry if you don't hit them first time, just reel in and try again. Although try not to do that too often or you might spook the fish. Result! I'm gonna get a bit technical with you now, so pay attention. Your line is attached to a reel on your rod, and all reels are fitted with an adjustable drag system. The drag system is what sets how much resistance there is for the fish to pull line out from the reel. So if you set it to its lowest setting, the fish will pull the line out easily and swim further away. But if you set the drag system to its maximum, the fish won't be able to pull line from the reel at all. It's locked up and the fish is going nowhere. Let's put that into practice. Try increasing the drag on the reel to 90%. Okay, if you had a fish on, it would find it difficult to pull line out from your reel. Bear in mind though, when you have your drag set this high, you're adding more tension to the line and that could lead to losing the fish. To monitor your tension, take a look at your drag system. When you have a fish on, you'll be able to see how much tension there is on the line by checking the tension gauge. Blue shows you when the tension is low, and red shows you when the tension is high. The two indicators at each end are there to show you when you're in real danger of losing the fish. You don't want to be in here, so adjust your tensions accordingly to get out of the danger zone. With that in mind, let's lower your drag to something a little easier on the fish. Something like 30%. When the drag is set this low, the fish will be allowed to take the line with a little bit of resistance, but it shouldn't be enough to lose the fish. The trade-off with setting the drag too low is that the fish can easily take the line and head for things that could snag it. You really want to keep the fish away from reeds on the bank and weed beds. If the fish makes it to those spots, then it might well be game over. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a fish on and you're reeling it in, my advice is to keep an eye on the fish's movements and what's around it. Constantly check the tension to make sure you have enough to reel in the fish, but not too much that it escapes. Think you're ready to take on a fish? You've got a bite. Time to see if you've been paying attention. Start off by reeling in to tighten the line and help set the hook but keep an eye on the tension. If you lose this fish, you'll owe me a new chod rig. Now stop reeling for a second. You don't want to add too much tension to the line. You can pull the fish in by literally pulling the rod back and then reeling in the slack line. Try it. Pull the rod back over your head.
See the tension on the rod? Now move the rod forward and reel in the slack line. Careful now. When there's too little tension on the line, there's a chance of the fish escaping by throwing the hook. But when there's too much tension, well, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen. New trod rig for me. Let's get this fish close to the bank so we can net it. You can move the rod to the side if you want to pull the fish in a certain direction. That's your tactic for pulling fish away from weed beds and guiding the fish. Quality stuff. You're almost ready to net this fish. Just reel it in a little closer. Don't forget to pull the rod back and reel in the slack line to bring the fish in properly. Here we go, make or break time. It's time to net the fish. Start off by picking up the net. Check it out. You've caught yourself a beautiful common carp. You've also bagged yourself some experience and tackle points. Let's get this little fella back in the water and we'll call it a day. Right, here we are again. Now this time I'm going to teach you a pretty advanced technique for catching fish. Don't worry about setting your gear up on a peg because this time we're going stalking. Stalking is a term anglers use when they're hunting for fish close to the bank. Now, why would you do this? Well, getting a bite in the middle of the lake and playing the fish is exciting stuff, but imagine seeing the fish on the margin, eating your bait right in front of you before it belts off and you're in action. That's the very essence of stalking. It's close quarters combat fishing. Now, let's get stuck in and see if we can get a bite. One of the best things about stalking for fish is that you aren't restricted to your peg. You're free to walk around the lake, look for fish and cast out to the optimum location. Give it a go. Walk up to the edge of the lake and cast out. Before you cast, take a step back and think for a second. If you're fishing in the margins and you're trying to get a fish in at close range, you're not going to bang out a massive overhead cast now, are you? Casting overhead to short distances is not the way to go. Instead, you want to change your casting stance to an underarm cast. It's a short range cast and is ideal for fishing in the margins. Performing an underarm cast is the same as an overhead cast. Just hold the line, pull the rod back and when you're ready, push the rod forward and release the line. It looks simple enough, but it's actually pretty tricky. Have a couple of practices to get used to underarm casting. And just in case you were wondering, you can still change your stance when you're preparing to cast. For this lesson, let's keep using the underarm cast. Oh, hold on, I've spotted some fish over there. Quick, reel in and shift it over there before they spook. Remember, when you're fishing in the margins, you want to keep an eye on the water and see if you can spot the fish in the lake. When you see a fish, you know instantly that you want to be casting your line in that area if you want a chance of getting a bite. Look, right there. Can you see them? I'm guessing there's a few doubles over there. Quick. Cast your line out and hopefully one of them will take it. Oh, is that a bite? Ah, nice one! Now it's just like before. Keep an eye on your line tension and reel your target in. Check that one out. Man, it looks like you picked yourself up some more experience and tackle point. Okay, let's get to it. Baiting with a spod is the topic of this next lesson. It's a great tool to help get the fish feeding. Let's start off with the basic principle of baiting. 
In case you didn't know, baiting is a term anglers use when they drop free bait in an area for the fish to eat. Now, why would any angler give away his bait if there isn't a hook on it? Well, it's kind of like opening a free all-you-can-eat buffet for fish. They can't resist it. Now, just think about having a well-placed hook in the middle of that feeding frenzy. Chances are you're going to get a bite in the middle of all that mayhem. And that's baiting in a nutshell. Let's give it a try. First of all, get yourself set up on a peg, then you can equip your spot. Good. Now, take a look at your selection of rods. You should be able to see that you now have a spod available. Just select the spod and you'll switch to it. It's that easy. Now, let me explain what a spod is. That rocket-shaped thing on the end of your rod is the spod. It's loaded with bait, and each time you cast and it lands in the water, it's dropping its payload. That is what you want. It's basically saying to any fish in the area that the buffet is open for business. Give it a try. Cast the spod like you'd cast a normal rod. Try aiming it somewhere in the middle of the lake. Usually you want to bait an area a couple of times, adding loads of food to the area. To consistently cast the spot at the same distance, you can set the line clip. The line clip limits the amount of line that's allowed off the reel, and by setting the line clip, you'll hit the same maximum distance every time. Try setting the line clip, reel in, and cast out to that exact area again. That's the one! To unclip, simply unset the clip when the spot is in the water. Job done. Now, let's switch to a hook bait and get it out there before the frenzy begins. Okay, now for the difficult bit. You need to cast your line out to the baited area without the line clip. I'm going to teach you a little technique that should help you to do that. What you want to do is set yourself up to cast as far as you can, but when you release the cast, hold the line again to slow it down. This will slow the speed of the line coming off the spool and should help you to guide the rig to the same spot as your baited area. Give it a try. Do a powerful overhead cast and as you release the line, hold the line again to slow it down. When you're slowing down the cast, you can also move the rod to the side to pull it in that direction. It's really handy for guiding the bait in the direction you want it to land in. Get in! You landed that perfectly in the mix. It doesn't look like the feeding frenzy started yet, so I tell you what, instead of standing like a spare part with your rod in your hand waiting for a bite, you could put the rod down and give your arms a rest. Ah, oh, isn't that better? You're probably wondering how you know if a fish takes the bait. Don't worry. You see that rest your rod is on? Connected to that is what we call a bite alarm. When you've got a fish on, you'll know because that thing will start beeping away like there's no tomorrow. Whilst you're waiting for a bite, you could go for a wander and see if there are any fish nearby. Or you could just relax and enjoy the tranquility. Hey, there you go. Quick, get your rod and pick it up before the fish runs off with it. Go on now, you got this. Reel that fish in.
That's another beautiful common you bagged yourself. You're getting the hang of this, aren't you? You're in for a special masterclass session today. I'm going to be showing you my own preferred method of carp fishing, and that's a three rod setup. This is the most commonly used technique for carp fishing because three rods out in the water increases your chances of getting a bite. So, let's get cracking. If you're going to fish with two or three rods simultaneously, you're going to need to fish from a peg. But you also need a few other things to get started. But for this lesson, you can just use my spare gear. Now, go and set yourself up on a peg. When you're fishing with multiple rods, you'll usually start with the first rod in your arsenal. If you want to change your tackle on a certain rod, you need to be holding it first. So, as you're already holding this one, why don't you change the tackle options on it? A little tip. I've cast around in this area and it's full of silt. So, try switching to a rig and bait ideal for silt beds. Right, when you're ready, cast out and find the silt bed. Okay, we've got one rod out in the water. Now switch to your second rod and do the same thing. Just change the tackle to something that will match the bed type you're fishing on and cast out. Top stuff. We've got two rods out there now. Switch to your third rod, and this time we're not going to cast out just yet. Instead, have a wander over there with that rod. I really like this fishing style because it allows you to leave two rods out in the lake and to take your third one for a little stalking set. Wait a minute, do you hear that? Quick, get back to your rod, you've got a bite. Hey, better hurry up or that fish is going to be off. Yes, fish on, reel that one in. Come on, stay in control. There you go. How about that one then to end the session? Looks like you've got yourself a lovely looking common there. It just goes to show you that the more rods you have out there, the more chance you have of catching a fish. Mm -hmm.